Hi, this is Katina and welcome to Bass Clarinet Basics. We're going to talk about all things bass clarinet today. Um, sometimes clarinet players stop by and they ask questions too, so if you have any questions go ahead and put them in the chat bar. But that it's easier to do when I'm doing these is to actually turn the light on so that we can see me better. That helps too. Um, pick a topic. So last week our talk topic was articulations. The week before that it was embouchure. So today we are going to talk about bones or warm-ups. Now that's something we talk about a lot with B-flat clarinet and hi! Um, so people don't talk about them as technical problem and one of the ones that I get the most questions about when I'm teaching and also here on the YouTube channel are playing to G over break right here. So there tends to be a lot of resistance here with clarinets. People can play up to F if they're able to play over the break. It's getting to that G that's kind of an issue. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on a note that we know works. Two, three, and C right there. So we're going to start on that C and then we're just going to go up. And with my bass, you can hear a definite timbre change in there from the C to the D is more open to pay attention to that when I'm playing because those are the spots, especially with bass, that if you overblow or you push in with your embouchure or you change your tongue position, that's where you get your squeaks. All right, so we did C, D, E, F, G, and that worked. So let's try D, E, F, G, A. And the other thing with, um, with, long tones and warm-up is that you want to go as slowly as you can. Now I'm going quickly for the sake of our YouTube live stream, but you want to put a metronome on, maybe quarter note equals 60, so that you can get that nice slow roll over the instrument. <laughs> these in the key of C major. So I started on C for the first one, C, D, E, F, G, and then I started on D, E, F, G, A, and since I was able to get up to the A, let's start on the E this time. So that worked too, getting up to the B, and now let's start on the F and we're going to go up to that C. And that's how I do that warm up to get up to the C. And then, just for good measure, I'll play a G. So that one had delay and sort of a grunt in there, and that was because I wasn't putting enough air through the instrument. But it's always that fine line with a bass of putting too much air and getting a squeak and not enough air and you get that grunt, that, that delay in speaking. So let's see if I can get it this time. I'm going to pay more attention to the corners of my embouchure, how my tongue feels on the top of my mouthpiece patch and what I'm doing here. In addition to sitting up straight, I'm going to put my feet flat on the ground for good proprioception. I'm going to try that G again. <laughs> little bit of a delay. Another thing that helps me is hearing it in my mind before I start playing. So that is just one of the warm-ups I do for working up to high C. So I'm going to peek and see if anybody has any questions. Not yet. And I'm going to show you another one of the warm-ups that I use that's a really, really good one. So in addition to playing over that G going up higher in the clarinet. Another one I hear is, how do I play over the break? So if you're able to play down to low F, um, B flat, A, G, F, E, you should be able to play over the break. So what I'm going to do is, hi. So what I'm going to do is that register key to get up over, register key to get up over that break. So start F. And that's how you should practice going over the break. A lot of people, unfortunately, sadly think they've done their scale, right? They're doing C major, C, D, E, F, G, A, and now they have to be able to go to the, over the break from the A to the B. And that's very, very difficult. When you're playing clarinet, you want to go to that partial that's on the lower register before you hit the register key. 
get that note nice and clear, full volume, then hit the register key. That's how you play over the break. So we just did low F, so the thumb was down right there, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, ah, and the pinky right here, and then to drop the clarinet, and then I just tapped the register key right there. So again. And if you play that way, it's actually easier to play up over the break like that. Now, we're gonna start on that low G. So no pinky that this time, we've taken our pinky up for low G. And now we're gonna hit the register key to get up to D. And then A right here to E. very unhappy with that one. I thought I hit the articulation too hard in the beginning and then over the break I didn't have enough air moving so it had that grunty delay in there. And the reason why I didn't have enough air is because I hit it too hard with that articulation and I was thinking about that and I was feeling kind of bad about that and then I was concentrated on that and I made the mistake in the future. Have you ever done that where you've made a mistake and then you're, thought, you're thinking about it and you're like, oh man, I made a mistake and then you make another one because you were thinking about the one you did? I've also had the other experience which was like, wow, I totally nailed that really hard thing that was so hard and I practiced it so much and I got it right and then I make a mistake because I'm not concentrating on what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna give that A to the E another try. No, that was also a terrible try. <laughs> And that one, I didn't have my embouchure set before I played. So I'm going to get my embouchure set here. I'm going to bring the clarinet to me. I still have that grunt. Let's see if we can get that out of there. So I actually had to crescendo more than I was comfortable with. I didn't want the sound to get spread. This is um, a reed that's a little light for me, and this is where it's showing up. So I like a lighter reed because it's easier to play and I get a bigger sound, but now I'm having trouble controlling it going over the break. So this would be a warm up that I would want to practice, or this E to A, or A to E is something I would want to practice more time on. Now, since going from problem. I'm going to start on the E and approaching this problem backwards and let's see if I'm able to fix it that way. So with bass, with the partials, it's harder to go to the lower. So I have to rearrange my, my voicing a bit for that. I have to back my throat. And that one I even changed the air. But now I'm going to go from the A to the E and see. So it was better. So this is one. These are the things that I'm paying attention to when I do warm ups. I spend a lot of time trying to craft how is the sound that I want to hear in my mind coming out of my instrument. But another one is is these in between places when you change notes. That counts too. So when you're moving from one note to another, you want to think about the back of the future note, right? And the front of the note that you're on moving into the next one so that you have beauty in that exchange as well. You can hear it when you're staying in the same um, range of the clarinet. So if we were just do C to D. No problems there, C to D. I was unhappy with my articulation on C, but the C to D was fine. So that's all fine, right? Nice, no grunts, no squeaks or anything like that. It gets harder when you do leaps. So let's try C. If you're ever at a loss for anything to practice, thirds. Thirds, 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 thirds. Get through all your scales, do all your arpeggios, but then not only are they a great way to practice that in-between space of the notes to get that beautiful too, but it they show up in music all the time. So it'll help your sight reading and your reading skills as well. So I just did C, E, D, F, E, G, those thirds in there to try and see if I could keep that smoothness in between the intervals. So like I said before, if you're staying in the same 
range of the clarinet. So we're in the shallow range. So anything below the register key is the shallow then it's easier to control it. It's once you hit that register key and you're moving from shallow to clarion and then clarion to altissimo, and even harder is the shallow to altissimo, that's when you start to have to pay attention more to your sound and keeping it beautiful in between those notes and those changes. So let's try the B flat right here and then that register key to the F. <laughs> Okay, let's try to C to the G. This is another one that's going to be a little trickier, and I have people play this interval exchange when they're learning to go to that G, which can be challenging on the bass clarinet. I had less problems with that one than I did with the A to the E. Another way to make this warm up work for you really, really nicely, and as many times as I try and, as I do this with clarinet and bass clarinet, I try and and I hate saying it, kill two birds with one stone, but I try and accomplish as many things as I can, as my brain can handle, right? And since we're going slower, it tends to get a little boring sometimes if you're not paying attention to all these tiny little details that we're talking about. So what I usually do is I'll pick a part of my music that is giving me some trouble, like a 16th note passage, right? And I will use that as my warm up. So, for instance, if we were just to look at the Rose Etude, I gave this example last week right here, and we were to take that little run, you can make that your long tone warm up. You can play that very, very slowly. And that way you're hearing it in your mind slowly, and you're getting it under your finger slowly, which is really advantageous to us. Advantageous to us. All right, so for instance, if I were to do that one, oh, my stand is stuck. Let me see if I can move it. Um, let's start on the B. I have to take a breath, so I'm going to start on that note I just left on. No, that one had a... I do half that speed. No, the B to the A wasn't clean. No, the E to the B, and that's where I took the breath last time. And then I'll do quarter notes. They're fast right now because I've been playing this more quickly just to just to do it for the live stream a little faster. Now I notice my D sharp right here is stuffy and a little bit um, closed off sounding. That would be the kind of thing that I would want to play around with that a little bit and maybe even take that to a technician and say, hey, you know, my D sharp key is being a little wacky in there. Um, so to to recap everything that I'm talking about with warm ups and definitely place you know chat and put it in the chat bar what your famous famous what your favorite warm ups are we all have different ones that we learned from our teachers or that we've come up with on our own um, I really like the one where I take a hard part and I slow it down um, and Richie Holly actually is the one that taught me that in a different way so finish up your practice session when you're all done right you spend all day well all as much as you were practicing and maybe it's not all day but you're working out all the details and all the kinks in your music take that hard spot I can do this take that hard spot that you were working on so much and you got under your fingers go back and do it really slowly as the very last thing that you do and I've been doing that and that's really lovely it's like when you're studying for a test and then you stop studying and you get ready and you go to bed and the very last thing you do is maybe read one thing 
one fact, one important thing to remember, and then just put it away and go to bed. So he was the one that suggested that playing it slowly, that hard part. But I just actually took that also into the beginning of my lesson or my beginning of my practice session, and I would do that slowly. Um, and then specific technique problems. Are you having trouble playing over the break? Make that your warm up. If you're having trouble playing up to a G, make that your warm up. Are you having trouble playing to this C right here? Make that your warm up, warm up into that, and going into the altissimo and things such as that. So, I like to do the long tone warm ups, which is what I talked about today. And I think for one of the future ones, I'll talk about articulation warm ups because those are a lot different than the long tone ones. The long tone ones we're doing to build stamina, have beautiful sound. And that includes listening to the changes in between the notes in addition to the sound itself and the start of the notes. So there's a little bit of articulations in that one. So it's that stamina, the muscle control, hand position, breathing. But I don't really use those for articulation exercises or articulation warm-ups, which some people do. So I think I should do a separate one on that. So if I don't have any more questions, I'm going to sign off. It was good to see you guys. I hope everybody's okay. Um, and thank you very much for coming. Bye.